Hi, this is Lady Lex UK and this is a Dreams Gadget Tutorial. Since the 11th of February, I've been having to update some of my tutorials because they've changed a few of the gadgets. This is an update to the Variable and Variable Modifier tutorial. And um, most of that tutorial is, still applies. The only difference really is the change uh, to the variable. There's a new button. So I will just be adding in the content within the old tutorial and you'll notice the differences um, I've got a, a a new imp for this for this tutorial so you can see the difference between the um, the two and you'll also notice um, the assembly error looks slightly different otherwise everything is exactly the same it's just you've got that new button hi this is lady lex uk and this is a dreams gadget tutorial uh, we've got to the end of logic and processing and here is variable and variable modifier now these two gadgets are uh, very rarely uh, in a level on their own they are normally paired together because this one modifies this one so um, i'm going to talk about these together now i've done a few tutorials that um, look at these two gadgets and um, i recently did one which was how to set a very own variable number the different ways that you could do it um, so a lot of what I'm going to say here ha is a repeat of other things that I have said um, I have some videos that show you uh, variables in action in terms of um, equipment and inventory and scores and things like that so if you're interested in that aspect of the variable then I suggest you uh, look at my playlist of dreams tutorials and find the ones uh, for the different element that you actually want to do different functionality right okay let's have a look at the variable first of all what is a variable well a variable is basically a number this variable holds a number that you set it to be um, it provides you with that number so that you can use it for gadgets for display for scores for counts of things for status of things it has a lot of uses a variable and um, I couldn't possibly go into all the ways that you could use a variable but basically all it is is a single number now um, the number that you can uh, have uh, is up to two digits long um, though and I wish they would change this the actual initial value you can only set it to one decimal place but you can have a two decimal place variable. So um, I think they need to change that. That's a, I think that's a little error. But um, other than that, um, you can create a, a, a num any number that you wish and you can change that in game. And that is what is mostly going to happen with a variable is that it is a variable number. It varies during the game. That's why it's called a variable because this number is going to be altered depending on what is happening in your game and um, it's not just a fixed number because if we wanted a fixed number we'd use a value slider or s switch or something like that so right our variable let's start at the top the very very top the toppity top variable this is where you put the name of your variable in and unlike other gadgets it's very important uh, variables need names uh, and so uh, you should pick something that's pithy short easy to spell and doesn't confuse you because um, you're going to be using this um, to affect other gadgets and you could be using this in other levels as well so you want to make sure it's a name that you can easily repeat um, don't make it too long uh, uh, lots of spelling lots of numbers don't use numbers and things words are better um, and and just make it nice and easy for yourself to demonstrate what it is actually doing so I'm going to create a little tiny program here that's going to count how many times I've pressed a button so I'm going to call this count right at the very very top you have a slider this is providing you with the initial value now for most of you and for most purposes uh, that's going to be zero it sets itself up the default of zero 
and most of the time zero is probably what you're going to want but it means you can also set it for any number minus uh, or positive and that, that number can be huge or, or, or massively small it's um, it's entirely I've reset my variable name uh, this is why pressing that triangle button is not always a good idea <clears throat> there we are let's put it back in there we go right watch for that if you if you don't if you try and um press the triangle button when you're over the wrong thing it's going to uh, remove what you've done right um initial value then so you can change that to whatever you need it to be and that's the value it will be at the beginning of your game um the minimum and maximum sliders provide you with uh, a range of which the the variable can be it cannot be any less than that it cannot be any more than that um it's probably a good idea if you if you're making a game and your minimum is zero to set it to zero probably won't make much of a difference for most cases but um it's a good idea to to uh, to set it anyway right the next button is called multiplayer and i'm going to completely ignore it because we don't have multiplayer i can't test it i can't show it to you and um, there are no tutorials on it so i'm going to leave that one alone and go straight down to the next one the next one is called persist in dream and as you can see it's a it's a, a, a icon of um, level linking now this is what you click on when you want your variable to persist between levels so you want that variable to be available when you've level linked to another level and now to do that you need another variable with the same name this is why uh, names are really important and why you should be um, picking names that you can easily reproduce um, if you have a variable with the same name what it will do is when you go from one level to another it's going to pass the information and populate that particular variable with the number that this one has that's what it will do that's what persisting dream does and if you come back it will bring back the value even if you've added to it or taken away from it and it will come back to us uh, and populate this again so it's persisting and you'll notice that when you click on this um, you get this option this is called force reset now I'm not 100% sure <coughs> um, why you would use this particular thing because if you want persist in dream you're not going to want this what this does is sets everything so that it doesn't persist so when you come back from level linking it set it back to zero um there might be a reason in your dream why you want that but if you wanted that then that would do it as well because um it hasn't persisted so that's to turn it on that's to turn it off and that's also to turn it off so i and there's no input socket in order to do that dynamically by wire so the only way to actually turn this on during the game um would be to use a keyframe so you would use a keyframe like this and press record and that and activate that and that would turn that on you can find that with any any button that doesn't have an input socket you can turn on um, with a keyframe there you go um, so with that confusion of what that button is actually for aside um, this is a very powerful uh, button and um, like I say it won't work unless you have a variable of the same name in another level now I have done tutorials on this so if you're interested in that I suggest you have a look Go look at my playlist of uh, dreams tutorials and scroll down and you'll find the one uh, for level linking and um, persistent dream variable persistent variables uh, and that explains it a little bit thorough uh, more thorough than I'm gonna do now okay right. let's have a look at the new button So over on the right hand side you can see the old variable menu and over on the left here you can see our new one and this is the really the change here is restore value on rewind. 
So uh, what this does is restores uh, the value back to, I think it's initial value. Let me just check. When on, if the player rewinds the scene, this variable will be restored to the value it has when the scene started. Right, so if you have come from another level um, with a persistent variable, uh, with a persistent variable, then it was going to return to whatever it was before you started. If you, have, if it's a brand new level and they press rewind, then it will be the initial value that you see. So, um, as a default, this is always on, and for most uh, circumstances, I would say um, this is what you probably want. It's going to be a rare circumstance where you want that turned off, so that the player, when they rewind it, re retain um the the variable number as it was uh the first time they played i can't really think of a reason uh um a scenario where you would actually want that turned off uh, but it's there if you need it and that is really the only change to this particular gadget right let's scroll down then um forget that uh current value now unlike other gadgets that actually show you the current value in the tweak menu this one doesn't it just has an output socket so um the current value is not displayed in the tweak menu but this wire you can wire that to uh, a displayer or another gadget that's how you get the value of your variable out to other things and it's displayed here here is our count um, so instead of displayed in the tweak menu, it's actually displayed on the front of the gadget. So that shows you what the variable actually is. These um, wires, these outputs here are booleans. They're ones and zeros. Uh, that says if the number is currently being increased or the number is currently decreased. So you can tell whether a number is going up or down and you might use that to uh, wire to another gadget to do something special. Right, so that's the counter. And here is the variable modifier. So there's our variable called count and here's our variable modifier. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find that variable. Now you can type in, you can select it here and type in count. But probably the best way is to press up on the D-pad and it will scroll through all the variables that it finds in the level and you choose the one that you want. That way you don't have to worry about typing mistakes and things like that. You just find your variable there. Right, so once you've done that, this is now going to modify the correct variable. We've got to decide how we want to modify it. The first one is set. Right, so let's put in an input so we can turn our gadget on. Right, so when I press L1, this is going to turn our variable on. We're going to put the power on and it's going to do something. So we've chosen set. So here is our operation value. This is the number we're going to set it to. So our 9.3 okay so we're going to turn our variable i turn our time playing on and i'm going to press the l1 button and now you can see our variable called count has now changed to 9.3 to match this if i press the l1 button again it's activating as you can see because it's flashing on and off but it's not doing anything else it's not adding to 9.3, it's not sending 9.3 every time, it's setting it to 9.3 and it's still setting it to 9.3, that's it, that's what it's doing, 9.3. So it's a one-off thing to set that variable to that number. Right, the next one is get. So let's reset it. So this is irrelevant now. Uh, this doesn't do anything at all this is this is not in play it's grayed out so it doesn't really matter what number you've got in here it's not going to affect it at all let's put a number in our count let's make it nine and this is now in play this is our variable value and um, I'm going to 
put a number displayer out and and I'm going to do that so we're going to get when I press L1 down and only when I hold it down it's going to display that number 9 which is getting from the variable see as it's holding the power as I hold the power down you can see it's sending that number 9 it's getting it from the variable gadget okay so this is not in play it's just get and then that's how you pass the variable number three it's not one that you're going to use that often i will say okay so i'm going to delete that right the next one is add so you choose what you're going to add one right so let's set this back to zero okay so every time i press the l1 button it's going to add one and this is what i meant when i said i was going to call it count this is what i was going to be doing i'm going to add one to the count of our variable every time i press the l1 button there we go that's working so every time i press l1 it's going up there we go so if you were picking something up for example it's sending a uh, a pulse to say i've picked it up and you would send that to that power and and it would say i've picked up 25 i've picked up 26 i have picked up 27 so that's how you would do it so you would wire that um uh, you would uh, have that s send uh, a message to our, our variable modifier to power on and send a one to our variable like that again i've done tutorials on this so uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing um picking up collectibles um there is a video on this right next one reset this when um i set it again this is grayed out this time it's just going to reset it back to zero as soon as i press zero I press the l1 button it's reset our count so that's what that is now doing okay so the only other thing that we need to look at is this continuously while powered now that before would only work um when uh it was powered on it would do it once but now it continuously while well powered so if i held down the button you see it's gone up and up and up and up as i'm holding on to it well before I can hold on to it as many times as it like because it only updates as soon as it's powered on. So that's the difference between powered on and continuously powered. One is it's doing it constantly as it receives power and this one only at the instant it receives power. So that's the difference between those two. And that's how you uh, change a, a variable and, and modify a variable. And like I say, there are lots of different uh, reasons why you would use a variable and a variable modifier. And there are too many for me to go into. Uh, but um, it will crop up in lots of tutorials uh, that I've already done and probably will do in the future. So uh, getting a, a really good understanding of what a variable is and how you modify it will certainly help you with um, a lot of tutorials because a lot of people will be using variables and they are very very useful indeed right thank you for watching hope that was useful and i'll catch you in your dreams